I'm Stephen McAdams, and I'm the Principal Investigator on a research project uh, within Kermit, which uh, brings together several different researchers from different uh, disciplines. This project is on the gestural control of spatialization in a concert setting, and uh, it brings together a composer, Sean Ferguson, uh, an engineer, Marcelo Wanderley, uh, another sound engineer and uh, acoustician, uh, Jonas Brasch at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in New York, and uh, myself. Uh, three of us are at McGill and one at Rensselaer Polytechnic. It also involves a postdoc, uh, Yorgos Marintakis, uh, who has uh, expertise in the areas of human-computer interaction and also auditory perception, uh, and two graduate students, uh, Niels Peters from uh, from Germany and Austria, who works in the spatialization systems and binaural modeling, and also Mark Marshall, who's an engineer working on uh, gestural control devices. At current, uh, Jonas Bosch and Niels Peters have developed a technique, virtual microphone control technique, for spatializing sound over a set of loudspeakers and programming that from a computer. Uh, this will be extended to be compared with uh, uh, two other techniques uh, for sound spatialization so that we can actually see which ones work best for certain kinds of compositional aims. Uh, and the gestural controllers are being uh, developed uh, currently as well uh, by Mark Marshall. And we're only just beginning at this point to try to do the mapping between uh, the control and the spatial parameters. Uh, the aim will be to actually have a concert in March 2008 uh, uh, of a piece uh, composed for the whole system by Sean Ferguson, uh, which will most likely involve a clarinetist, a cellist, and a percussionist, and the gestures of each of these musicians will be used in some way to control various aspects of the spatialization of the sounds that are being created in the electroacoustic piece. And the point of this project is to try to create technologies uh, that allow for spatialization of sound over uh, an array of a large number of loudspeakers in a concert hall uh, for using space as a compositional element uh, in a musical piece uh, and also to develop ways of uh, capturing gestures of musicians uh, to then spatialize the sound uh, during a concert uh, in real time. Uh, of course, uh, you've got these two technological developments and you need to somehow map one to the other and that's where uh, perceptual psychology comes in to try to find the best mapping possible to tune uh, the uh, gestural control to the actual spatial parameters. So you might want to change the position of a sound in space and have it move around. You might want to change the uh, impression of the, the space one is in. Is it a large room or a small room or a dry room or a reverberant room? And have all these being parameters that can be controlled in real time as one is listening to the music, uh, thereby increasing the impact of the music in an electroacoustic setting. Uh, each of the people here comes from different uh, domains and they have to all work together to make the whole project work. So I think this is uh, why this particular project is uh, a exemplary of what uh, should be going on in Kermit and which is going on in Kermit. Uh, another interest of this project is that it crosses several of the research themes. It covers music perception and cognition, uh, motion capture and devices, and also sound modeling and acoustics. We've got a basic example of control of the spatialization. Here, the hand positions within the sensor's operating area are mapped directly to the sound source positions within the spatialization system's range. As you can see, both hands can be used and each hand is controlling a separate sound source. And both the sensing and the placements of the sounds are occurring in 3D, as can be seen in this display. Sounds can be moved in all three dimensions. It's also possible to control other parameters of the system using gesture. Here the vertical position of the right hand is being used to control the diameter of the virtual microphones. The left hand is controlling the position of the first sound source with the second sound source following after a two second delay. Here we're showing part of the interface to the system which allows you to map parameters to map gestures to parameter data. By clicking on the listen button, the interface begins listening to a predefined UDP port where it accepts open sound control messages. The messages are collected, sorted and stored into this matrix to allow for easier mapping.
Here we're mapping some gesture data to particular parameters of the interface using the predefined linear and inverse linear mappings. It's also possible to enter a function to use as the mapping between the gesture data and the parameter of the spatialization system. So in this case, we're going to add a mapping which is based on a power function. This final example shows a number of the different methods of control of the system. Here, as well as the position of one of the hands controlling the position of the sound source, the relative distances of the two hands is being used to control parameters of the system, as is the calculated center of gravity of the user using a force-sensitive floor 